So about a month or so ago on stream, we were talking about what we think is going to get game of the year. And straight away, I was like, it's definitely going to be Tears of the Kingdom because <laughs> that's what I was playing at the time. And we love Tears of the Kingdom. And then Tom was like, but what about Final Fantasy 16? And just immediately I was like, no, nope, it's not going to be like that. But now that I've played it, I kind of take, <laughs> I take all of that back. I think it definitely could be a contender for game of the year. And we are like the biggest Zelda fans of all time. Not that we don't like Final Fantasy, like we're big fans of Final Fantasy, but this one in particular really blew all of our expectations away. I know a lot of people have been kind of wary of this title just because it's taken the franchise in this far different, more action oriented direction. So if you want to learn a little bit about it before you drop your hard earned dollary dues on it. 900 dollary dues. Well, guess what? You've come to the right place because this is our spoiler free Final Fantasy 16 review. Let's go. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. You've got to give them time to like and subscribe first. Oh, yes, oh, hit that subscribe button, like the video, all that jazz. Now go. So the protagonist this time around is named Clive Rossfield and it follows his journey for revenge that somehow eventually it turns into him saving the entire world from impending doom, essentially. Classic Final Fantasy. We don't want to give away too much about the story because we want you guys to experience the joys of learning about it for yourself. But what we will say is that it's way darker than a lot of other Final Fantasy games. The story here explores themes of segregation, torture, prostitution, racism, murder. Obviously, it's an action game. It's pretty much what you do in action games, go around murdering people. It is the first Final Fantasy game to have a mature rating. And although all the Final Fantasy stories are brilliant, this one in particular, the rating just allows it to be far more gritty and darker and just more adult in general. More freaking badass. Now these tones definitely appeal to Laura and I, you know, we're adults and stuff. We do understand it's not for everyone. Hey, we love a cozy farming sim too. But we know the question that's burning on everybody's mind is what's the combat like? Final Fantasy has always had turn-based combat. Even the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which kind of blurred the lines between action and turn-based, definitely relied on you switching to your other characters and controlling them. So while it was still on your own terms and your own timing, it was still very reminiscent of turn-based combat. But Final Fantasy XVI is 100% action. I can swing either way. Give me a bit of turn-based combat over there, a bit of action combat over here. I don't mind. I'm easy. Give me all the combats. Laura, on the other hand. I prefer action combat. And some people say that action can be a little bit more difficult, which is totally fair. A lot of action based combat relies on like perfect timing for attacks and dodging. And if you're used to turn based, I 100% understand that there's going to be this little bit of a learning curve there for you. But the game has done a lot to help those certain people out. There are these rings that you can equip that help out with a lot of the game's combat mechanics. So there's a ring of timely evasion where Clive will automatically dodge, a ring of timely focus where the game slows down just as you're about to get hit to give you a little extra time to dodge, a ring of timely strikes I think that allows you to do full combos by just hitting the attack button once. There are more, I can't really remember all of them because personally I don't really use them, but you can equip none of them or you can equip three of them at once if you want to make the combat a little easier. There's also a story focused or action focused difficulty setting that you can choose from right at the start of the game, which is basically normal or easy mode. The developers just really wanted to make this transition to action combat as smooth as possible for those who don't really play action games, but who might really love the Final Fantasy series. Basically, they're just making it more accessible to more people. And that is never a bad thing. For someone who is comfortable with action-based combat though, it's actually next level amazing. Like probably one of my favorite battle systems ever. It's all about timing and taking advantage of the game's battle techniques like parrying and perfect dodging. But once you nail the timing, the combat is so smooth and it's so satisfying. 
I actually found the combat in Final Fantasy 16 way easier than in Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I don't know if it's because I'm not playing it on stream, so I'm taking more time to learn the combat mechanics and how they work, or maybe it's just because I prefer action combat. But I found it incredibly intuitive and the iconic moves are freaking awesome. This is actually one of Final Fantasy 16's biggest differences with the rest of the franchise. The way that you use summons is very different in this game. Instead of collecting and being able to summon icons in battle, it's like every icon has one dominant. So there's only one person born at a time who can literally become them. That's what a dominant is. So as you progress through the story and defeat the dominants, you absorb a little bit of their power, but not all of it. So you can't actually summon Bahamut or become Bahamut, but you can use some of his moves. So you don't really have summons per se, but personally, I think it makes it way cooler because in boss battles, you can actually become a boss too and then fight gods, basically. And it's probably one of the most badass things of all time. <laughs> All of my top five favorite boss battles of all time have come from this game now. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Fair one enough. of them's in space. Yeah, yeah, that one is pretty cool. The boss battles in this game will absolutely blow your mind. I actually cannot rave on about them enough. The soundtracks during them are straight up bangers. The graphics and the visuals are freaking awesome. And they're just like the epitome of epic and then once you've completed them you get even more sick moves to learn so i am going to quickly interject here into the combat and talk about the music for a second because laura's just brought it up it's really hard to explain how good or bad music is and what genre it is especially in video games where you've got everything from this medieval like loot playing which fits the like you know medieval european setting of the game really well and then you've also got the boss battle music which can be like straight up metal or like dubstepy yeah like electronic -y. <laughs> and then there's everything in between but it's just the soundtrack here is so good you're definitely gonna want to download it and listen to it on your way to work or school or wherever party it is. playlist you could have like a whole party a legal warehouse party <laughs> where the music that you play is all boss battle soundtrack from Final Fantasy. This is probably going to be too much information. In fact, it's definitely going to be TMI. But I was on the toilet last night and Laura's playing Final Fantasy 16 and I just sat there for 10 minutes just like listening to the soundtrack. And I came out and I was like, that was a really good toilet experience. <laughs> you know, how good is that music? There you go. It's a good soundtrack for pooping as well. <laughs> Epic shits. <laughs> Okay, so back to the combat. So with every new icon you channel, a new circle appears on your skill tree. And you can use ability points that you earn in battle to learn them. You can use two special moves and one icon feat in battle. And there are like four moves available on your ability tree. So you do have a little bit of wiggle room to customize your perfect move set. You can only channel three icons at once in battle though. So you really do have to pick and choose between what are your favorites and what your playstyle is. I love being able to shape your character with a skill tree. It's one of my favorite things about RPGs. Don't worry, plenty of RPG mechanics here, guys. It's not just a straight up action game. Laura's Clive is probably gonna be different to your Clive. I wanna meet all the Clives. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Introduce a, me to your Clives. <laughs> that's a weird fantasy. <laughs> Is it? I feel like I cannot be the only one. I mean, he's pretty sexy, so <laughs> fair enough. I'll give it to you. Oh, the Clives. Second to Clive here, guys. <laughs> In between these epic boss battles and story missions, you spend most of your time in the hideaway. The hideaway is like your base of operations, if you will. It's where you'll find most of your side quests, which are all really good, by the way. I kind of found a lot of the Final Fantasy VII Remake side quests annoying, mm. but these ones were all a joy. It's where you can restock on potions, craft weapons, sell stuff, 
and check the hunt board, which is another one of my favorite things about the game. The hunt board is where flyers are put up that give you the locations of super strong enemies that need defeating out in the world by you, obviously. Who else is gonna do it? No one. These enemies have massive bounties on their head. So if you're looking for cash or good crafting items, honestly, just a nice challenge. This is a really good way of finding those things. It's also a really good way of just buffing out the game a bit, you know, giving it more content. It is so much fun. And again, one of our favorite things about the game and the hideaway in particular. The hunt board doesn't give you the locations of these enemies though. So you do have to go a little bit Nigel Thornberry to track them down. Smashing. But it doesn't really matter how cool a game is if it doesn't work properly, does it? But thankfully, Final Fantasy 16 actually works really well. It looks incredible all of the time. I experience no bugs, no crashes, no glitches, maybe a little bit of popping, but honestly, what game doesn't have popping? I have read online that people are experiencing frame rate drops, particularly in the big battle scenes, but personally, I haven't noticed anything like that. So maybe to the well-trained scrutinizing eye, the frame rate might drop a little bit, but it's nothing so severe that I noticed it at all. So it can't be that bad. This game truly feels like a next generation PS5 exclusive. And the performance is half the reason that it is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Yoshi P has actually said that there was a PS4 version planned very early in development, but they scrapped that idea because they wanted to maximize performance and it really shows. Final Fantasy 16 is different in many ways, but just because it's action combat, we don't want you to let that put you off. It has differences, sure, but it's still very much a Final Fantasy game. It retains that Final Fantasy spirit that we all know and love. There is a lot of Final Fantasy-ness to be found here. You still have plenty of side quests to do between missions. There are still absolutely epic boss battles with freaking amazing soundtracks as always. All of your favorite icons are there and it still has that incredible storyline that Final Fantasy games are known for as well. If you're not a fan of action games, Final Fantasy 16 does a really good job of introducing them to you. Whether it be through mechanics like the rings we mentioned previously, or the fact that it's got all of the other beautiful RPG mechanics that we all know and love. Maybe though, you're not a fan of the Final Fantasy series for whatever reason, turn-based combat or not. 16 also does a really good job of convincing you to play it through things like the action combat. Final Fantasy 16 does a really good job of staying true to what is a Final Fantasy game, that Final Fantasy-ness, as Laura said, and also doing enough differently to draw in new players. And that's a really hard line to ride, but it does such a damn good job at it. In terms of its all over gameplay, all over performance, all over everything score, we give Final Fantasy 16 a 9.999 out of 10 because nothing's perfect, but this pretty much is. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. Thank you so much, actually. We know we normally do in fact, we exclusively do Nintendo content here on some kind of gaming, and this is a bit different for us. So if you're new here and you just wanna watch this video and ditch because you don't have a Switch, that is totally fine. Thank you very much. If you do wanna stick around, thank you even more. Laura had the opportunity to play this game before release, and we'd be stupid not to review it because it is an amazing game and we freaking love RPGs, man. So here we are. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next week for some more Nintendo related content. All right. It kind of doesn't really look like we're squatting though, does it? I feel like it looks like we could be you squatting. You are sick, <laughs> sick in the head. <laughs>